Today is going to be a great day. B-I-N-G-O, B-I-N-G-O, B-I-N-G-O. And bingo was his name, oh. Fantastic. Why am I singing the bingo song? Because today's active learning strategy relates to that fun game. You're going to learn the process, hopefully have some fun, and possibly win a small prize. Are you ready for today's active learning strategy, educational bingo? Yeah! Let's do this! Students, behind me you can see 40 colorful terms related to a wide range of different subjects. And I'm about to give each of you a playing card. And it has 24 spaces that you're going to need to fill in. One is a freebie right in the middle. So you take these 24 spaces and you pick terms from anywhere up here on this list and you write the term in. Then I'm going to read some definitions and you're going to cover up that term if you happen to have it written down. What will you cover up the term with? I've got some confetti. I've got some stickers that still have the paper backing on them. And I've got some pennies for you to use. So again, you're going to write down 24 terms from anywhere up here on this huge list. Understand what to do? Yeah. All right. Here are your bingo cards. How many terms are you going to write down from the list? 24. 24. Do you have to do 24 in order? No. You do them how? Randomly. Randomly is correct. So please go ahead and jot those down. As you write the terms on your bingo cards, please make sure you're also reviewing the definitions in your notebooks. So I have some different playing pieces here. Angela, why don't you bring your roll up? You can pick the playing pieces that you want or grab a combination, that's fine. Some of you are probably wondering, how do I win in this game of bingo? Well, Monica, come on up here. I need you to demonstrate. There are three different ways you can win. You can win vertically. You can win horizontally and diagonally. Fantastic. Let's give Monica a little something like that. Nice job. Your first definition is... Flowing water creates energy that can be captured and turned into electricity. Flowing water creates energy that can be captured and turned into electricity. I want you to cover up the term, if you have it, that goes along with that definition. Second one, it helps you see landforms and bodies of water in specific areas. It helps you see landforms and bodies of water in specific areas. You think you have the term written down that goes with that definition, please cover it up. If not, again, you do nothing. Number three, beads used on a frame for counting and calculating. Beads used on a frame for counting and calculating. 
When I first started my teaching career, I used one of these. That gives you a little idea of how long I've been teaching. The Bingo Active Learning Strategy is a wonderful way to measure the knowledge level of your students when beginning a new topic or when bringing closure to a unit. The really exciting aspect of this strategy is the freedom your students have in creating bingo cards. With the subject of your choice less 30, 40 or more terms on a handout, chalkboard or through a computer presentation, then students pick 24 terms from the list and write one in each box. Students are instructed to do this in private and choose terms randomly. The middle square is a free space. Once all the students have written down their terms, no erasing is permitted, and I begin reading the definition. If the students think they have the term written on the bingo card that match the definition, they cover the square with a small plain piece. I read another definition until we have a winner. Then, the student excitedly yells, bingo. Is it a true bingo? Well, as we find out, more learning is taking place. I may go over and check, or I may have the student read all the terms that were covered. Either way, it allows me to provide more information. If correct, I exclaim, we have an official bingo. If a student gives a term I did not use, we continue the strategy until someone wins. I give the winner of each game, or sometimes multiple winners, a piece of hard candy, a colorful pencil, or some other inexpensive treat. Then we continue the game for another quick winner, or we clear the cards and begin again. We are up to our ninth definition. Twelve dozen. Number ten. Sunlight can be used directly for heating and lighting homes and other buildings, generating electricity, and for hot water heating. Bingo! <laughs> Hold your cards. We may or may not have an official bingo. Uh, let's see. And while I'm going through these, if you want to open up your notebooks and just check your definitions, this would be a great time to do that. Hydropower, yes. Physical maps, correct. Abacus, what I used when I first started teaching, yep. <laughs> Chemical change, and finally, solar. Excellent job, you are correct. Official bingo, you may clear your cards. Now I have a little something for you, come on up. You've got some options. You can have some licorice. We've got some pencils or simply an extended coffee house clap. What do you want? I think I'll take an apple. Good choice, and you still get the coffee house clap. Well done. Cards are clear, cover up those free spaces, and let's play game two. How does that sound? Yeah. yeah. And Claudia, you can certainly win again, and again, and again. Here we go. Half the globe. Half the globe. You decide how your students will win. I typically change the way a student may win with each new game, diagonally, horizontally, vertically. Once we have an official bingo, we can simply keep playing so we have even more winners or we can clear the cards and begin again. For a truly quick game as the period is about to end, copy the bingo card back to back on their handouts so students merely have to flip their sheets. Then I may say just take four clues off the chalkboard this time and form a postage stamp or just fill in the four corners. If I have plenty of time, I may have the students cover all spaces known as blackout. The students really enjoy this challenge. No law ever written said that letters have to be B-I-N-G-O on the top of the card. It could just as easily fit your curricular area with words such as science, math, history, or be even more creative. How about words such as techniques, conversions, formulas? Please note, this is not a traditional game where you are saying B1 or O70. It is about matching terms and definitions. As we get into the game, students sometimes ask me to read the definition to a specific term from the list. I ask them respectfully not to do this and I try to keep it random. You might even pick the terms out of a hat for each game. 
As students are filling in their cards with terms, I go around the room and individually and respectfully ask my more reluctant students if they would be willing to play. I explain it is fun and fairly easy to win. Occasionally students will decline for a variety of reasons. As always, I never force them. I explain tactfully if they should change their minds during this strategy, I will be accommodating and give them an opportunity to jump into the next game. As we are finishing the current game, I have them begin writing down their 24 terms. And now here is my friend Gwen, world language teacher extraordinaire, using the bingo strategy to teach Spanish numbers. Hola, clase. Hola. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Vamos, uh, mañana vamos a tomar un examencito con los números. So hoy vamos a jugar bingo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yo tengo 24 números sobre la pizarra y vamos a repasar los números. Uh, ustedes van a repetir 3, 3, 3 41, 41, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, la palabra bingo, ¿verdad? Sí. Ok. Now, vamos a contar por qué hay 24 cuadrados, ¿verdad? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, en un espacio gratis, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, en los cuadrados, Ustedes van a escribir 24 números. A mí no me importan los números. A mí no me importan los números. Ustedes pueden escribir el número 3, el número 23, 45. So, toman un lápiz. Toman un lápiz. Todos tienen un lápiz o un bolígrafo. Excelente. Y escriben 24 números. Y escriben 24 números. En los cuadrados. lápiz o un dulce o un dulce yo voy a llamar el número y ustedes van a cubrir el número con el pedazo de papel Alison, tienes que escribir uno, dos, tres, cuatro números más, ¿verdad? Cinco. Cinco. Ustedes van a tomar el pedazo de papel y cubrir el número. Cincuenta y siete. Fair and firm was a model my father used to maintain an engaging and friendly classroom environment. When I asked him specifically what that meant, fair and firm, he said, you will know when you experience it. Students need to be well aware of your expectations. Display them proudly in your room and always do so in a positive manner. For instance, my dad's colorful sign might say, please bring a pencil to class and please be prompt. And when his students didn't rise to his expectations, he was always fair even when it meant treating students differently depending on their specific set of needs. For instance, if a student had mobility issues and needed an extra minute or two to arrive on time, no problem. Creating a level playing field is the fair thing to do. But once a developmentally appropriate expectation was established, my father was firm on meeting this requirement. He always wanted his students to leave his class at the end of the year a little smarter, a little more organized, and a little more respectful. The truth is, many of his students made significant gains in these areas, and my dad would say it was because he tried to be fair and firm. 68. 68. Bingo! Excellent! Bingo! Muy bien! Okay. Ah, Ellie, tienes que leer los números, por 
favor. Tienes que leerme los números. 31. Excelente. 15. Muy bien. 40. Ajá. Espacios gratis. Excelente, gratis. Muy bien. 14. Muy bien, tú eres la ganadora. Excelente, excelente. Muy bien.